So Corey, we're on your booth here at Emo. Um, we're going to talk about encoders, but can we start at a basic level? What is a, an encoder, please? Absolutely. The, the encoder, in, in, an encoder of any type is going to be a device which provides feedback to the controller, so the controller knows the orientation of any axis. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, most machine tools are, are made using a ball screw connected to a motor, and on the back of that motor is a rotary encoder. Now, more and more, people are starting to use linear encoders to provide direct feedback. So it's actually taking metrology to the next level. Yeah, why is that? Why You're absolutely right, but why, why is there a greater adoption than has ever been before in linear technology? Yeah, that's right. The, um, all, virtually every industry that we're, we're dealing with is uh, driving for finer and finer tolerances, so parts fit together better, parts look better, the surface finish requirements are getting tighter, and so all this demands that you actually do things a little bit better in terms of your, your control loop. So a linear encoder, one of the primary things that you can do with that is by giving you direct feedback, it's showing you exactly where that linear position is. So you're not using uh, a, an estimate of position derived by an, a rotary encoder and then the accuracy of a ball screw is telling you exactly where you are. Now that becomes particularly important when you've got a machine which is going through temperature cycles. Run up and down on a particular axis and temperature builds up. When the temperature builds up, the ball screw is going to grow. So what do you do about that? Well, there's different adopt techniques you can adopt. One technique you can adopt is to cool that ball screw, which means you have a chiller, you have thermocouples, and all that is adding more cost and more complexity to the machine. Or you can use a linear encoder. That linear encoder provides you with that stability. And this is what this, this product is all about. It's process foundation. So it's providing a stable environment in which the process can be carried out. It, 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 you know, it, it, this is fitted in quite a harsh environment, isn't it? Mm, yeah. So, you know, how easy is it? it I'm, I'm sure it's reliable, but they do fail over time, that all of them do. So how easy is it to repair and replace? Yeah, that's, that's it. That's a very good question. Actually, one of the things we've done on here is um, provide an opportunity for somebody to very easily repair the encoder. The, the reed head inside, this is the only optical encoder on the market where the reed head itself is properly fully sealed. So all the optics, all the electronics are safely housed inside um, a sealed up housing. Um, so even if you flood, and we've deliberately flooded some of these encoders, even when you flood them, then that reed head survives. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, fragile electronics or difficult to reach optics becoming damaged. It means that you can just take off an end cap, pour out the oil or coolant or whatever it's managed to get inside there, and you can just clean through on the inside with a cloth, um, and then the reed head, just wipe over the reed head, wipe it down, reassemble the encoder, and you're back up and running again. We've been doing this ourselves at, at Renishaw, carrying out tests, putting encoders, in from taking them off, off machines, deliberately flooding them, leaving them for 24 hours so that, that coolant or oil really gets inside all the nooks and crannies, then clean it out, refit them onto the machine, and just to prove that the machine's working perfectly still. Um, we actually even do that on one of the machines which we use for some of the finishing operations on the brackets. A year ago that I was, I was flooded those things, those encoders still, they don't have, just have 100% signal, they actually got 110% signal on those encoders there. So there's a global productivity drive at the moment. So what would you say to these engineers that say I need a box guide ray machine to really push my machine? Yeah, that's right. The, I mean, the ability for a machine to move larger amounts of metal depends on a variety of different things. So you're right. Um, you know, improving the stiffness and the resilience of the machine is one area to focus on. But actually, there is a second limitation in the system, which is when you get vibration building up inside the machine, um, no matter what the construction is, at some stage, you're going to generate vibrations which are going to travel into the encoder. Now, that's particularly important when you hit the resonant frequency of the encoder. Um, when you hit that resonant frequency, the reed head starts to shake around. All the ca wheeled carriage inside a traditional optical encoder is going to start to shake. And what we've done in here is we've taken a different approach. We've removed that, that wheeled carriage from inside there. It's a non-contact system, and we've added tune mass damping. So tune mass damping is a technique where you can actually remove or strongly damp the vibration at the resonant frequency of the encoder. So this remains really, really stable. In fact, so stable that you can hit the encoder with 15G of vibration and the encoder still maintains its position to much less than a micron. So, that, so that's a patented technique that we've applied there. And so we're the only people who do, can do that and we're particularly proud of it.
So obviously there's a big focus on end user adoption here. Mm. Are you suggesting people change now even though they, or are you suggesting they change when their current encoders fail? Um, well, for if you're purchasing a new machine, then we'd certainly be asking customers to talk to us, find out more about why it is that their next machine that they buy should have Renishaw encoders specified on it, rather than a competitor encoder. So that's something we've done to, to, to help people out with that. These encoders are bolt hole compatible, so they, they will bolt directly in the same place as the, the main competitors. They're electrically compatible, and in the case of many of the controllers, they're actually even parameter compatible. So you can unplug a competitor, plug as in, you might need to do some tuning, you might not. It depends how close the, that, that servo loop reacts in the, uh, to the change of the encoder. But it means that the change in process, we've simplified it, made it as easy as possible for the customer or the OEM to actually adopt our technology instead of the competitors. So maybe faster, more accurate and easy to adopt, what's not to like? Yeah, that's, that's right, that's right.